the previous video, which I will link right down below, I showed you how to wire the left turn signals, the right turn signals, the horn, the parking lights, the parking lights with the headlights and the high beams, the brake lights, and the hazard lights. Today, we're going to swap out the Kubota light switch for these other style light switches, because this is really common to use on like race cars and stuff. So I'm going to wire up these in the place of that, and we'll see how it goes. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this switch and disconnect all the wires that go to it, and then we'll start putting the other ones back in. So I now put my switch panel on the board so that we have something to attach all the switches to. And we're going to start with the horn because it is the most fun. This switch that we're going to use for the horn is different than all the other switches I'm going to use. This is the only one that's different. And that's because it's a momentary switch. You can see as soon as we push it, it pops back. It's not like a regular switch which has on and off. So this is the horn and the horn relay is number one. So we're going to ignore the rest of the relays on this board for right now. Here's how it works. We have power coming in from the battery to this fuse block. So all these fuses have power right now. This 5 amp fuse right here comes through this blue wire and powers up this whole power distribution block. And this whole block is going to power up our switches and it all runs off of one 5 amp fuse because the switches don't need a lot of electricity to actually tell the relays to turn on and off. The relays um, have all their power coming from these five other fuses and those are what actually power up the lights and the horns and stuff So once again power comes in through the fuse the 5 amp fuse over to the power distribution block and then that 5 amp power is Carried through the white wire to pin 86 on relay number one Pin 30 on relay number one is the blue wire and it comes over and it goes to this fuse right here Which you can follow right along Pin 87 is the yellow wire, which cruises over and actually powers up the horn when you turn it on. And then, of course, the horn needs a ground, which you can see comes over to the ground. So all we have to do is turn this relay on, and we do that by grounding pin 85. So all we have to do is basically connect this to the switch, and then connect the other side of the switch to a ground. And then you'll see the switch controls the horn. So let's extend this wire over here connect it up here, and then we'll run another wire over here to the ground. You can now see that we have the switch on the actual switch board, and we have two black wires coming off of it. One wire cruises down here and goes right to this ground right here, which apparently is not tight, so let me tighten that up. The other ground comes down here and goes to pin 85 on the relay. So all the switch is doing is grounding pin 85 on the relay, and when it does that, it activates the relay and turns the horn on. Now as far as numbers go, number two is after number one, so we might as well go to number two next. And number two is the headlight circuit. This is going to be a fun one because we also have the dimmer switch. And the good news is that once you know how to wire number two, number three, four, five, and six are going to be a total piece of cake because they're all wired pretty much the same way. So you may recall power comes into this fuse box through the 5 amp fuse, through the blue wire to the power distribution block. Now this power distribution block is just going to be sending power out to these switches. And you can see I have a couple of blue wires that are cut off here from the previous Kubota light switch. So we're going to use one of these blue wires to go to the headlight switch. And then the other side of the headlight switch will come over and it will connect to this white wire right here. This white wire is pin 86 on the relay. Pin 85 on the relay goes to the ground. Pin 30 on the relay is the blue wire, which comes over and goes to the 10 amp fuse. And then pin 87 cruises up here in the yellow wire and goes up to our dimmer switch, which is still wired exactly how it was before, but we'll go through it in just a minute. Now the toggle switch that we're going to be using for the headlights is a single throw, single pole switch. These are like the cheapest switches you can buy, and they just go on and off. There's nothing special about them. They're used for like everything in life. All we're going to do is basically connect the blue wire and the white wire to the switch. I have to extend these wires obviously to make them reach all the way here. But we're gonna do that and then we'll kind of explain the circuit and show you how it works. We now have the switch in place, which you can see turns on the bulbs. We also have the high beam 
and then you can obviously turn it off again. Now, the way that this works is these bulbs have two different filaments in them, and each filament is a different wattage. So one of the filaments, the low beam, would be like maybe 8 watts, and the high beam might be like 20 watts. So that is how it is controlled from low beam to high beam. It's actually just changing the filaments in the bulbs and changing the wattage which is drawn through the bulbs. Sealed beam headlights work the exact same way as these bulbs. Now, let's go over how this is wired. We have the power coming into the 5 amp fuse through this blue wire to the distribution block. And then the power comes out the distribution block through this blue wire to the switch. The other side of the switch, switch is the white wire, which is pin 86 on the relay, relay number 2. Pin 85 is the black wire, which goes over to ground. Pin 30 is the blue wire, which comes right over here and goes to this fuse right here, which is a 10 amp fuse. And then we have the yellow wire, which is the output of the relay, which goes up here to the dimmer switch, which is the yellow wire. And then the dimmer switch has two outputs. One goes to the lower wattage filament in each bulb. One goes to the higher wattage filament in each bulb. So that's how it works. Pretty cool, right? Now, the number three relay is your brake switch, which you can see right here. Now, this is a hydraulic brake switch, and we wired that in the previous video, which I'm hoping that you've checked out by now. And we're going to leave that exactly how it is, because it doesn't make any sense to swap a brake switch to a toggle switch, because then every time you push your brake pedal, you'd have to flip a toggle switch, which just doesn't make any sense. But I'll show you how this works really quick as a quick reminder, and then we'll move on to the turn signals. So, for the brake light switch, we have power coming into the 5 amp fuse, cruises over here through the blue wire to your distribution block, and then the power goes out the blue wire over here up to your brake switch. And then we have the white wire coming out of your brake switch, which cruises on down and goes to pin 86 on relay number three. Pin 85, like all the others, goes to ground. Pin 30 is the blue wire on the bottom, which comes over and goes to this 10 amp fuse. And then the yellow wire that comes out of um, relay number three goes up and it comes around here and connects right here and then it splits off into these two red wires and these are 1156 bulbs which have a single filament in them I'm not sure if you can see that or not but there's only one filament instead of two so these ones are two these ones are two those ones are two but these ones are only single filament bulbs so they can only do one thing in this case it's brake lights now brake switches they come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. Two really common ones are the one I have, have right here, which it doesn't normally have this thing in it. I just use this to actually activate it. But it's just a hydraulic brake switch. It threads right into your uh, hydraulic brake system, and then when the pressure builds up into your brake switch, it turns on the lights. But another option is this, which goes on your brake pedal. So on the top of your brake pedal, it's normally closed like that, or open, I should say. And then when you push your brake pedal, this white thing pops out and it activates the brake lights. And then you let your brake pedal back up, pushes that in, and it opens the circuit back up. So these are two really common brake switches. You can pretty much interchange them however you want. It's just uh, kind of dependent on what type of, what type of car you have. All right, let's move on to turn signals. Moving on to relay number four, that is our parking light relay, which is going to control these four bulbs. Now these four bulbs are dual filament bulbs, which means they serve two purposes. So they're actually going to do the left turn signals and the right turn signals, but also do the parking lights at the same time. So we're going to focus on the parking lights right now, which is really number four, and we're going to control it with another switch. Now this switch is the same exact switch as we used for the headlights. It's a single pull, single throw switch. And the cool thing about switches that control relays is... You can jump the power from one to the next to the next, and it's totally safe to do so. So this is just uh, a block of three different switches. They're all single pull, single throw switches. And we're going to take the power from this headlight switch, and we're going to jump it to the parking light switch, and then the right turn signal switch, and then the left turn signal switch. So I'm going to pop these into this switch holder, and we'll hook up the power wire to the headlight switch, and then we'll talk about it a little more. So let's do that. We now have the switches in place. So we have headlight, parking light, right turn signal, left turn signal. And we'll get to the turn signals in just a minute, but for now, let's focus on the parking light. As you can see, it has power going to it, 
from this headlight switch that I jumped over, but it's not actually connected to the relay yet because we need to hook up this white wire, which goes to pin 86 on relay number four, to the switch. Once we hook up this, this wire to the switch, we'll have parking lights. So let's do that and we'll see how it works. So we've now connected the white wire from the switch right down here to pin 86 on relay number four. And if we flip this switch, hopefully all four of these light bulbs will turn on. And they do, so that's fantastic. All right, so let's review. Power comes in through the five amp fuse over to the distribution block through the blue wire to the headlight switch, and then it's bounced over to the parking light switch. The other side of the parking light switch has the white wire coming out of it, which goes to pin 86 on relay number four. Pin 85 on relay number four goes to ground, which is right here. Pin 30 on relay number four comes over here and goes to this 10 amp fuse. And then pin 87 is the yellow wire, which comes out and it actually connects to all four red wires on these bulbs. And by flipping this switch, we tell the relay to turn on, which then takes power from the fuse and sends it from pin 30 out pin 87 and to the bulbs, which we can see right there. Let's move on to the turn signals. Now they're actually going to be really easy because we already have the switches in place. And as you recall, we already bounced the power from this switch to this switch to this switch to this switch. So all we have to do now is hook up these two white wires to these two switches. One is going to be the left turn signals. One is going to be the right turn signals. Let's connect these wires. So we now have the white wires coming off of the switches and going to pin 86 on relay number five and relay number six. So if I flip this switch, hopefully we have left turn signals and this one will do right turn signals. Let's give it a shot. We do. So we have the left turn signals and we now have the right turn signals. And the cool thing about doing this is we also have the parking lights, which can run at the same time as the turn signals because they're dual filament bulbs. And then if you really wanted to get crazy, you could do the parking lights with the hazard lights, which is really just turning on both directionals at the same time. Maybe we turn on the headlights too. High beams, hit the horn. We'll do whatever we want, you know? Gotta live a little. Now the turn signals obviously need a flasher. And this flasher just goes in the middle of the power wire that feeds the relays. So you can see the power comes in and it goes through the 10 amp fuse to the flasher. And then the flasher has two wires coming out of it, which go to pin 30 on both of these relays. And then the output of the relays is the yellow wires. And one goes to one side and then one goes to the other side. And then of course we have pin 85, which just go to ground for both, both of these relays. So the flasher is just basically pulsing the power signal that is being sent through the relays to the bulbs. Now, one thing I just noticed was we have an extra blue wire here that we just don't need. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that because, you know, we don't want extra wires just hanging around. Am I right? There. Much better. Now, this type of setup might be great for a race car or a hot rod. Probably not good for a daily driver because it's a little bit of a weird setup. But maybe you can take the pieces of this circuit and apply them to whatever you're building and, you know, make it work for you. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. I actually have a whole bunch of videos just like this already in my library if you want to check out some right now. In fact, I'll put one up here in the corner so you can check that out. You'll probably like it if you like this. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.